Order. I, I'm sure the sound will be adjusted. Uh, are you seeking the call, Mr Hughes? Gareth Hughes. Uh, kia ora, Mr Speaker. Na mihi nui kia koutou. Kia ora. Uh, Mr Speaker, it's good this House is looking at youth unemployment. It's the right question that we're asking, but what we have in front of us, the minimum wage starting out amendment bill, it's clearly the wrong answer, Mr Speaker. I'm proud to stand and oppose this bill, this flawed ideological and discriminatory bill. It's flawed because the entire premise is wrong. Cutting wages doesn't create jobs. Cutting wages doesn't encourage people into work. Now, I haven't heard a single economic report, a single piece of economic research quoted by the government members. The fact is, Mr Speaker, there is limited research. And in fact, the research is strongly on the other side of the camp, which is higher wages, does encourage work. We saw it in New Zealand when the Green Party ended discriminatory youth rates in the mid-2000s. And in fact, it had no impact. If anything, more young people were in work. So it's flawed. The premise is wrong. It's ideological. Well, we know it's plainly ideological because the regulatory impact statement says as such and there were no alternatives canvassed by officials. It's ideological because it's 90s thinking in 2013. It's the whole plan for the economy is to cut wages, to make us even more of a low-wage, high-work economy. English said as much on competitive. John Key said he would be fine to see wages drop. Mr Speaker, this isn't the way to be building our jobs and our economy all it is, it's ideologically supporting a small, and I mean a very small number, of some employers who see their future in cutting wages, uh, flicking workers off. It's flawed, it's ideological, and it's discriminatory. It's clearly discriminatory because it's picking on one group. This bill targets uh, 16 and 17 year olds and sets up two types of employment in New Zealand. Those 16 and 17 year olds who are paid a discriminatory rate and those 18 and 19 year olds who had been on the benefit who also will get a discriminatory rate. So it's flawed, ideological, it's discriminatory. In fact, I'd call it nasty. The government didn't look at the alternatives. And now we know from the Official Information Act as well, the Ministry of Education even advised against it because it's contrary to the government's own education goals. But, Mr Speaker, I'd also contend from the government's perspective it's counterproductive because this sends a terrible message to young people that they're second-class citizens who should be earning less. It sends a message to employers to flick off young people uh, after 90 days so you keep paying them the discriminatory uh, lesser rate. But also, for all New Zealand workers, be they 20 years or above, it's driving down wages across the entire New Zealand economy. Again, it goes back to that flawed approach to the economy. The way to build prosperity and growth uh, in jobs isn't about reducing wages and working conditions through 90-day trials from picking on paper boys and paper girls in the last budget. It's not about damaging the environment and racing other countries to see you can cram as many cows on a paddock. That's not our future. That's not a way to provide solutions to these 90,000 young people right now, today, not in employment or training, which on similar rates to Spain and other similar countries. Mr Speaker, what young Kiwis in our economy needs is a plan for jobs, a plan for sustainable prosperity. Every week we get bad news. We see Mainzi or Solid Energy, Telecom might be on the cusp of 1,500 jobs. We've lost 30,000 plus jobs in manufacturing. Kiwis want a hope. They want a vision. They want a plan. And that's what we went to the election with in 2012, a plan to create 100,000 green jobs. This is the way the future is going. This is where capital investment trends are going. It's where the influential business leaders are saying. They said we could see 50,000 jobs in clean energy. I was at the Wind Energy Association conference last night and their plan for 3,500 megawatts of wind electricity would deliver 1,500 jobs for New Zealand. What we know from the oil and gas report, which Minister Bridges was quite happy to subsidise the industry to the tune of $130,000, Mr Speaker, was that this industry could see in the most likely scenario 199 jobs. Yet this region lost 910 jobs in the first three years of this government. Mr Speaker, under National, we're going backwards. We Kiwis want real solutions. That's why we're working with Labour and the other parties on the manufacturing inquiry. That's why we're supporting employers and exporters. That's why we're promoting ICC, ICT, which was up 17% in the last year. It's grown $3 billion in the last two years, Mr Speaker. That's why we're putting out innovative proposals for a second cable, for greater training education incentives, 
sensible patent reform, uh, Mr Speaker, get better government procurement. That's why we're looking at clean energy options and the 50,000 jobs we're seeing there and the $600 million we could be saving per annum and the Greenpeace report. Mr Order. Speaker, the macro the is a balanced economy expired. looking to the future. Simon O'Connor. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, 